So someone could be eating this in a restaurant in Copenhagen in a year's time and it'll taste pretty much as good as it did when it came out of the water. We absolutely believe it, yes. Yeah. I'm headed to a fish farm, 20 kilometres off the coast of Galanyala, the Bangala name for Port Lincoln. As a nation, Australia consumes 350,000 tonne of seafood every single year. That's about 15 kilos per person. And about a quarter of all that seafood is frozen. As a chef, I've always been a little bit dubious about frozen food. I guess I wonder what quality is lost in the name of convenience. In particular, the quality of frozen fish. But since freezing technology was invented in Australia over 150 years ago, it has advanced in leaps and bounds. The team at this farm are using a way to freeze fish that attempts to lock in taste, texture and aroma as if it were fresh. And what size are the fish uh, yeah, they, here today? Yeah, these fish are about five kilograms. And is that They've the, taken about two years to get to that okay. size. And is that the, the kind of target weight around that five right, kilo mark? Right, yeah, the fat levels are beautiful in the fish. But before they bring them aboard, they're giving me a once-in-a-lifetime chance to swim with the 35,000 fish, something they do regularly to check on stock. Have they been fed? Uh, these have been fed for about a day, so they're a little bit hungry. <laughs> the water is a chilly 15 degrees, which is at the lower end of both mine and the fish's tolerance. These majestic yellowtail kingfish are native to the waters of South Australia. <laughs> That's a lot of fish. <laughs> and at first glance, the stock looks strong and healthy. They're prized for their firm, sweet flesh and are regarded as one of the best fish to eat raw as sashimi which fetches them a good price at market. What would the dollar value on that be? Uh, is it two million dollars in this pen? <laughs> Can be sure. It's the first time I've had a million dollar bar. That's, uh... <laughs> so how do they manage to keep them so fresh? Well, it all starts with how they're harvested. So is kingfish a difficult fish to handle uh, and maintain the quality of the product? We've spent two years farming these animals right up to this point. Yes. And so this is the point where you, you don't want to ruin all that hard work. <laughs> yes, yes. And this is where we try to have the animals as relaxed as we can, given the nature of this animal. It's critical to keep stress levels to a minimum, so they're dispatched quickly and humanely before making their way to the icy holding tanks. We're doing everything we can to reduce uh, lactic acid buildup in the, in the animals, glycogen, things that will cause you know, negative impacts on the flesh quality. It seems counterintuitive to go to all this trouble to grow a fish people love to eat fresh and raw and then freeze it. Back on shore, 12 hours after being caught, is where they lock in that freshness. And is this the freezing uh, facility so here? So this is our liquid nitrogen freezer, both our large production unit and also our small research and development unit as well. This is a far cry from throwing your fresh caught snapper into the old freezer at home. This is super freezing. Fish are cryogenically snap frozen around 10 times faster than other commercial methods. The temperature that we freeze down to and the speed is critical, that locks in the, the flavour, the taste, the aroma and the, and the texture of the fish. So the liquid nitrogen is delivered into the system, distributed throughout the cabinet by the fans, so we get as much 
contact adhesion of the liquid nitrogen atomized to the packaging to freeze it down as quick as we can. And if we close this door and turn it on, how long till those two fillets of fish are frozen? In 70 minutes, we'll have some beautiful frozen fish down to around about minus 50 degrees. So when we turn the machine on... <laughs> Fanning a fine mist of liquid nitrogen is not only faster, but up to 20 degrees colder than other freezing technologies. But there's a downside. It's an expensive and energy-intense method. And here we are. That's rock solid. Absolutely. So someone could be eating this in a restaurant in Copenhagen in a year's time, and it'll taste pretty much as good as it did when it came out of the water. We absolutely believe it, yes. That's incredible. I want to understand how snap freezing to minus 50 degrees preserves the integrity of the flesh. Technical advisor Mark Harrigan is going to walk me through it. So, Mark, I've just learnt that when it comes to freezing fish, quicker is better. What's actually happening on a cellular level during the freezing process that makes that the case? OK, well, the fish, unsurprisingly, has a lot of water in it. And what we're doing is we're converting that water into ice. But we need to go through that as quickly as possible. When you turn water into ice, you create ice crystals. And the longer you take to do that, the bigger they get, the more jagged they get. And potentially that damages the texture. It breaks the cellular barriers both within the cell and between the cells. And that's why you get a mushier taste with conventional freezing, because it yes. takes too long. So, Mark, if quick is better when it comes to freezing, why don't, why don't we just get a big vat of liquid nitrogen and just dip the fish straight in? Well, it's a real good question. Uh, let me show you. With um, uh, some fruit here that we've got. I'm going to pour some nitrogen. It never gets old playing with liquid nitrogen. No, it never does, does it? <laughs> Let's do an orange. Similar in size, if you like, in terms of, you know, thickness to our fish. And so the temperature that that nitrogen is at currently, uh, what would that be? It would be at minus 196. Pull that out, and you can see... It's like a cricket ball. It's pretty hard. You see there's a few cracks in the skin. That's been caused by the instant exposure. And um, let's see what happens when I try and smash it. Do you want to hold that with tongs, or...? Oh, yeah, let's see what happens, right, so... <laughs> What's happened is the outside's frozen quite quickly and has been damaged. The inside, though, is still quite soft and mushy. Right, so that, I mean, that feels like fridge temperature, maybe a little bit cooler. Yeah. I mean, in the it takes there. a while to get the core down. So with the fish, what we want to do is we need to get that core down to at least that minus 35 and that okay. core through that ice formation process as quickly as we can. But we don't want to damage the outside. We spray a vapour into the cabinet, brings that temperature down, it's nice and uniform, and it brings the surface down really quickly, the core down a little slower, we get that core down, we get the improved quality. Can frozen fish ever taste as good as fresh fish? Well, there's only one way to find out, a taste test. But I'm not talking about tasting the fish smothered in some buttery French sauce or disguised in a crunchy beer batter. I'm talking about the ultimate taste test, eating the fish raw as sashimi. I've gathered a group of sashimi lovers at this local Japanese restaurant, where a top chef is preparing samples of fresh kingfish alongside a carefully defrosted, cryogenically frozen one. Some of the tasters will get two slices of fresh kingfish to compare to a snap frozen one. Others will get the opposite, two snap frozen and one fresh. And just so there's no bias, I'm revealing nothing about the taste test. Just that there is a difference between the samples on their plate. So there's a couple of telltale signs on this fillet that shows it's been frozen slowly. One is there's gaping amongst the muscles. Another is moisture loss, with all that ice crystal poking out through the cells, lots of moisture and nutrition is lost, and as it defrosts, you can see the liquids start to come out. That also gives it that, that kind of squishy, mushy feel. So that is a piece of fish that, you know, we classically associate with the, oh, geez, I don't really like frozen fish that much. That's this guy. But my tasters are sampling a cryogenically frozen kingfish 
that has been defrosted according to strict instructions. Let's have a look at where the technology is now. This is also a frozen fillet of fish. And so with the fast freezing that happens with cryogenics, the ice crystals are much finer so they don't damage the cellular structure of the fish as much. So all the moisture is retained and it doesn't have the same amount of damage as, say, this fillet of fish. Compare that now to a fresh fish and you'll see why my taste test is going to be tricky. Now you can see looking at these two, there are subtle differences, but they look pretty close to one another. For me, there's one big key difference and it's in the bloodline. So let's have a look at that really beautiful, vibrant bloodline in that fresh fish and the bloodline in the cryo frozen fish. Still looks good, but just doesn't have that same vibrancy as the fresh fish. It's these subtle visual differences that my group of testers should be picking up on. But will their taste buds back it up? Let's find out. I'm thanking you. So what do you think we were actually testing for? Uh, lots of different things uh, ran through my mind, but I guess the one that I picked out, I picked it out because of, I thought it was superior and it tasted the best and it had the best structure and what I would expect from good quality kingfish sashimi. So I'm guessing it had something to do with quality. Freshness and quality. I thought one of them was frozen. Frozen, exactly. So what we were testing for was a comparison between fresh and frozen fish. So, what are your thoughts on frozen fish? If it's frozen sashimi, it, it would taste really, really bland compared to beautifully fresh kingfish. Frozen sashimi, no, I wouldn't really eat it. It's just not a personal preference. There was actually some pretty clear results. Firstly, five out of seven of you picked the odd one out. Which is pretty impressive. Six out of seven of you said they preferred the same fish. Frozen. Six out of seven preferred the frozen fish. No yep. I want to know if I was one of those. You were one of those. Oh, are you serious? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so shocked. I'm absolutely floored. I 100% would never have guessed that the one that I preferred was the frozen one. Yep. Wow, okay. I would eat frozen fish.